Welcome back to Frank's Model Aviation Workshop. This is episode 28 in the Carl Goldberg Ultimate 10-300 Biplane Build Series. This episode we're going to glue the canopy on, we're going to get the wings covered, and we're going to finish the cowl and wheel pants. So we'll get this thing completed, hopefully, by the end of this episode. So uh, I went and got me some fresh canopy glue. I like to use Formula 560. It's a Zap product, but it's the same as all the other Formula 560s. I think there's a couple different kinds, but uh, we're going to use that to glue the canopy on, and it takes a while to dry clear. So what I'm going to do, I'll do it first, then we'll get to covering the wings. I'm going to save the canopy, or the, not the canopy, but I'm going to save the cowl and the wheel pants for last because I don't want to uh, make a lot of dust before I start covering the wings. So we will get to uh, doing this canopy first. So if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Hit that notification bell so that you can be notified of future episodes of this build series. And be sure and like and share my videos. It just might help somebody get their airplane finished. So without further ado, let's get started. So I think what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put a little bit of gloss black. I know it's supposed to be flat, but I don't have any. Gloss black monocoat in this area just to make it look a little different. I usually just keep it blue, but it doesn't look right. This ain't gonna look scale, but at least it'll, uh, it'll be closer than not having anything at all in there. So I'm just gonna, probably not gonna be able to see this. Oops. So I'm gonna just mark where that goes. And we'll cut that out with scissors. And I'm gonna cut slightly to the inside. start ironing this down while my iron is warming up.
I'm going to shine this up with Windex. That look good. Now there's a little bit of blue showing. So I'm going to take some semi-gloss black and just touch it up. Good enough. Okay, so now I'm going to take this downstairs and wash it. Make sure it's nice and clean and lint free on the inside. Outside, it doesn't matter, but I want to make sure this is clean on the inside. So I'll be right back. Okay, so it's as clean as it's going to get for 30 some year old canopy. So I had some overspray on the inside, and uh, the last time I tried getting overspray off of a canopy which is right here I use just a tiniest bit of acetone don't use that it'll fog your uh, it'll melt the plastic and fog your canopy so I just use denatured alcohol it came right off a little bit of elbow grease so we're gonna get set up I'm going to poke a zillion holes all the way around the perimeter here in the covering just give this a uh, RC 560 or Formula 560, something to dig into. And we will be prepared to uh, put some uh, glue on it. I'm going to mark the canopy or mark the edge where I want it. So I'm just going to take a T-pin and just go all the way around this, basically like that, stay within your lines. So we've got a zillion pin and pricks all the way around. Most important ones are up here up front. That way you know you got a good bond and wind's not going to take your canopy. So what I like to do before I uh, install it, I want to go around and I'm going to put a, a bead of the glue all the way around the perimeter on the plane and on the canopy and let that set for a little while let it kind of get opaque I guess you can call it just a thin coat that way you know it's penetrating the uh, the pinholes and this all dries clear so it'll be all right
Now I'll do the same to the inside of the cockpit or the inside of the canopy. So I just put the bead just around the perimeter of the canopy. Okay, it's hazed over enough. You don't want it to completely cure because if you go to put it on, it's going to stick permanent wherever it's at. So I put a liberal bead this time around, especially on the front. it carefully starting in the back Using Windex to clean up the edge, just to kind of blend it in better. Okay, there's the canopy glued on and taped up. We'll let that dry overnight before we take that tape off. That way we know it's glued down perfect, permanently. All right, so now we are on to monocoating the wings. Okay, it's all glued on didn't 
wait till it was overnight before I took the tape off. It was already dry. So went ahead and cleaned up the perimeter and it's glued in place. So now I'm going to set this aside and we will go ahead and cover the wings. Okay, so we're going to start with the bottom wing. I'm going to first tack rag it off. Being careful not to snag anything. Don't want to have to do any repairs. This will help the monocoat to stick better. And we'll be doing the bottom of the wing. And the top will be left open until... I get the entire plane put together because I'm going to do a lateral balancing and I'm going to have to add weight to the left wing tip because of the engine head is heading out the right side. So we got this, well the bottom's tacked, then we'll do the top and you're probably wondering what about the tabs, are you going to paint them? And yes. First thing I'm going to do though, I'm going to cover it and we're going to mask off, we're going to paint it with some thinned out resin to seal the grain of the wood and then I'll, after that dries we will spray it with some deep blue uh, rust-oleum. So that's it, it's tacked, we'll get set up, I'll get some monocoat laid out and we'll cut a piece. I'm going to do it all in one piece. And I think first I want to cut these holes through so that I'm not searching for them after it's done. So here's a helpful tip when you open your monocoat. Take this, take the sticker, if you can get it off, stick it to the inside of your tube. So if you don't use up the tube, you still got your uh, color on there. So I'm going to cut this just like this. I'm going to save the scraps for the ailerons and interplane struts, stuff like that. Now I know this is new monocoat, so I'm going to make sure I save this in a different spot. Okay, so let's turn this over. And one thing I forgot to mention is we are going to have to cover the tips we're going to cover the tips and the inside of the ailerons here and probably put a little tiny piece in that little crevice here. So we're going to take a piece, stick it in here, basically like that, iron it on, trim it around, and then we'll iron it on around the perimeter.
really difficult to do this while I'm trying to film it because I'm trying to pay attention to what I'm doing here and pay attention to whether it's in the camera angle or not. So we're going to relieve this corner. I'm going to take the scissors and go around this trailing edge. That is what we're going to do to the trailing edge. So for this area here, it's going to be difficult to show you, but I'm just going to put a little piece in here. It's about burning my hand off. I'm doing the best I can to show you guys, but it's really, really difficult because number one, this piece is microscopic. But basically, I'm just going to treat it like I did the tip of the trailing edge and just go around it. Hopefully, I don't rip it off there. So I can't see a dang thing I'm doing either. Good enough. All this prep work is going to make doing the rest of the covering a breeze. That's basically all I did. Okay, next we're going to do the wing tip. Probably the easiest part of the whole ironing process. It's flat. And we're going to go around it with this. 
or attempt to. Work yourself, work your way around this thing slowly. And where this curve happens, that's where it gets tricky because you got to kind of move the uh, gauge as you go around. As you can see, I got my moving blanket down there to keep the hanger rash to a minimum. That's basically that. Now we will go and trim this. Trying to keep and get a hanger rush on this thing while I'm doing this is kind of difficult.
There's a wing tip. These little foggy areas you see there, that's adhesive from the monocoat. Some trim solvent or even some uh, Windex will get that off. So I'll do the other wing tip and then we'll get the covering. Okay, let's get this bottom skin on here. I've got my camera in a very precarious position, so <laughs> it might fall. Once again, like I said, you want to be careful taking this plastic backing off because if you peel it and it creases, the crease will stay in it. That's the adhesive side, of course. I'll flip this over now. So I like to do this all in one piece. Some people split it. I just don't like seeing that seam there. And if you're going to do that, I would put the first piece to the edge of your fiberglass and then the second piece to the other edge of the fiberglass when you're on well, your overlap. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to tack the wing tips. Make sure I have enough all the way around. Tack it down over here first, just a, a little. Just to make sure it ain't going nowhere. Then I'll tack this wing tip. And when you tack it, you want to make sure you pull it straight. Well, barely had enough. <laughs> and that's another reason you want to leave that have a monocoat edge there so it has something to stick to. Now I'm going to come over here. Pull it just enough. And it, it has a hard time tacking down to uh, the fiberglass. So just kind of take your time with it. What I'm going to do is cut it at that root there. Just like that. That will relieve that a little bit. tack the center right there at the fiberglass the rest of it's going to be open structure
one thing I like about that lost foam wing is there's no seam where the uh, leading edge is. Now I'm going to cut the trailing edge along the inside where the aileron is, where we put that piece. That way we pull that in, it'll cover up nicely. I'll do the other side when we get to it. Now we we'll just work our way towards the wing tip. Okay, so that's that. Now we'll come up down this way. Okay, so I'm going to cut this tip here. And 
And we're going to go across these tips and cut it off just flush. Saving my scraps. So I'm only going to go around just enough to get my overlap. Careful.
So I'm going to continue doing this one side before I move on to the next. So the trailing edge here, it's only going to go just past the halfway point. Now I'm just trimming off this end flush with the trailing edge tip. So far so good. A lot of this stuff you're seeing right now, I already covered previously. So that's why I don't have the camera in real close right now.
I always feel for stuff that needs, you know, dealt with, like, pleats or anything hanging over that might need ironed down. So there's one side all tacked around. Now I'm going to continue it with the other side. Same, same way. Trying not to get any hanger rash on my wing as I'm going. So I'll start with the leading edge.
cut the hole out. Well, there's the bottom of the wing. I haven't shrunk it yet because I can't until I get the top. And I just have like an eighth inch overlap around there and on the wing tip. The front will be overlapped just past this. That way the seam will be on the bottom. You won't see it. And this piece here, it's sanded as best I can get it smoothed out. Uh, it's underneath the fuselage, so it doesn't really matter. Don't look too bad. So we'll set this aside. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to do the ailerons for the lower wing. That way I can at least hinge them up and get the control horns on them and all that stuff. Okay, so there are a couple different ways you can do this. Well, more than a couple. You could cover the ends first, then do the top and the bottom. Or you can do what I like to do is the top first on the ailerons. Do the top and then wrap them around the ends and then do the bottom. Or you can even do it a little more tricky in one bit, one piece. Wrap it and just keep, keep bringing it around. But that's a little more difficult, especially when you get to adding the heat and it'll all start to wrinkle as you're going around. It'd be hard to get all those uh, wrinkles out. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to cover the ends, do the top, and then the bottom. So this is the left aileron, so it's basically going to be like this. So I'm going to do the top first after I do the ends. One thing I found about Monaco, you can tell if it's good or not by the smell. Some of the stuff that I used or tried to use that didn't stick, didn't have the smell that you're used to smelling with Monaco. This stuff definitely has a a smell to it. So what I'm going to do, since this is going to be the top and it's oversized, I'm going to cut each end off and I'm going to use those to cover the ends. So we'll save this aside. I did tack rag this stuff off.
You want to keep little bits of monocoat off the table or whatever you're using because it can get under your covering job. A little pleat here. Just gonna cut it off. Basically, it and do the other side the same way. And I need to make sure when I do this side, I'm going to put a uh, BL on the covering so I know which, where it goes on the plane. Okay, there's that. Okay, so now the top, we just put it on there where we have enough to wrap around. trailing edge first make sure you don't have any trash on it 
actually. Let's cut these tips. See how I have that overlap? I'm going to just cut these uh, tips right there. All right, now we'll start to iron it down. Ailerons aren't my favorite thing to do, but because they're so repetitive, it's kind of like a biplane wing, you know, you got two of them to do. But it'll look nice when they're done. Now we're going to do the old overlap trick. I will put the control horns on as well. And I'm gonna do, I'm only gonna do one aileron on camera. And then we'll, the rest of them I'll do off camera just to save time and space when we get this thing done. So now we'll bring it on around. I'm anxious to see what this thing weighs when I'm all said and done. And this little overhang here will just slice right off. put a BL on there. Now on these we'll just I'm gonna go past the bevel. Now I'm going to take the knife and just cut just past the bevel. I 
I'm not gouging deep into the covering or deep into the wood, just the uh, just getting the covering off. So we'll iron this down tight, and the bottom will overlap that, and we will cut it at the peak. cut flush. that and what I want to do is identify those holes before I put the other side on. I'm just going to push a pin through. Just so I can see them. Okay. Now we'll do the bottom and that's basically just going to be cut flush here it's going to get cut flush here and this is just going to go to the peak we're just going to lay that on there Work our way down, just like we did the other side. flush first. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the trailing edge just to where it's 90 degrees to the end.
we'll take the razor, straight edge razor, and we'll cut it off right there. And now we'll seal that down. Now we'll do the bevel, and the bevel is just going to go to the peak here, and then we'll cut it off. And we'll just take and cut that at the peak. And we'll roll it over. Always be feeling for areas that might come up. And there is the completed bottom left aileron. Now you can see how it raises up. So just give it a little bit of a bend like that. Hold a little bit. Might need more than that. Let it cool a little bit.
Now we'll go ahead and put the hinge it up to the wing. If I can find my hinge location. And there it is, hinged up to the wing. Okay, both ailerons covered. Bottom of the bottom wing is covered. Got to leave the, the tops uh, covering off, like I explained earlier. I'm going to have to put some weight tucked in here. And then we will uh, cover the top. But it's coming along. It's late tonight. I'll pick this back up tomorrow. So uh, we'll finish the top wing. I think I might do the inner plane struts next, then the top wing. But she's looking sweet. Okay, for those who want to know, I'm going to, I'm going to try this Rust-Oleum Automotive Primer Sealer. So we'll see how that works. Hopefully it works good. So we'll get to painting. Okay, there's two things I want to do before I get to the inner plane struts. I want to put the landing gear on the wheels and the wheel pants on permanently and we'll silicone on the wheel skirts and I want to put the decal on for the Gordon Price pilot deal. So we'll get set up and do that. First thing I'm going to do is prep these grub screws with some blue Loctite. First thing I want to do is prep this landing gear for the silicone. I don't, I don't want any oils or anything on this, so I'm going to clean it off. You can see how dirty it is. Okay, now we need the wheel pant. wheel collar wheel another wheel collar Try not to drop it into the wheel pants. Okay. So before we do these wheel collars, I want to secure that wheel pant on there.
we'll center this wheel. But first, you want to get the add a little screw in there. That's good enough, maybe. Okay, that's good, right there. So now we'll do the same thing for this side. pants are on now so what I'm using to glue my wheel skirts on is this window outdoor window uh, silicone it's clear and it's flexible so it'll flex the landing gear so basically I'm going to run a bead down in here Doesn't have to be a lot because it'll squish out. So I'll place it on there and get it lined up.
And here's the crucial part. You want to make sure that it is in line with the fuselage. It's easier to do it from the opposite side. Basically looking at the span of my wheel pant and kind of make it even with that. Double checking because it moved. Okay, do the other side. pretty good. Next thing we're going to do is put the uh, Pilot Gordon Price sticker in there. I'm going to clean it off with some Windex. And these are vinyl as well. I think they look way nicer than the, the kit decals. Looks more professional in my opinion.
repeat that for the other side. Use my finger now to make sure that is stuck down before I peel this up. That's respectable. Looks good enough. So all we got left to do are the inner plane struts, the top wing ailerons, the top wing, and the top of the bottom wing. And that's it. We're ready to put this thing together and uh, take this out to a maiden one of these days. It warms up if spring ever gets here. Dang groundhog. It's always lying to us. Anyway, let's get started with the interplane struts. I'll show one and then I'll do the other off camera just to save, you know, minutes off the uh, video. And I'll, I already showed an aileron, so I'm going to do both of those, and then we'll get to the top wing. I'll show you how I'm going to cover around those tabs, and it's it's not too hard. It's just you know you just got to be mindful of things. So we'll get set up and do this these interplane struts. Okay, so we're going to get set up and cover these things. And I'm going to use this really tightly wound stuff, and it's good. It's got the good smell to it. And we got to determine, we got to make sure we make one left and one right, because the inside is going to have the overlap on it. So I'm going to go ahead and mark so we know. This one will be right, so I'm going to put an R on the bottom. And this one will be left. That way when I'm covering it, I'll know exactly how we're going to do it. So since that's the right, we want to do this side first. Let me see something here. Let's see if those will fit. Yeah, I can do that. So I'm going to cut this. covering this side. Now we're going to go ahead and tack rag. Gets all the dust off of it. Basically, I'm just making it to where I can see that I have enough to go around it. So I'm going to put it down carefully. We're going to tack this end. And then we'll tack the other end.
All right, we'll just work our way around. What I want to do now, I want to relieve, give me a little bit of wiggle room here. I'm going to relieve this side. I'm just going to leave about a quarter inch past this so that I have, I can stretch it a little bit and do that on both front and back. That way I can, I can stretch it down. These aren't the easiest things to cover, but you take your time, you can get them to look at halfway decent. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this center section first. Tag it on both ends. Here's where you need a third hand. bring this around and we're going to uh, secure it on the other side. Do the same for this side.
All right, now we will continue with this. We'll basically tack it down around the corners. Trying to get a better overlap here. It's kind of hard to, it's really odd shaped. So if you can't see what I'm doing here, I'm just fixing the overlap. And I'm cutting it here so that it'll overlap flat onto that plywood instead of having like an air bubble in between it. Okay, that's that side. Now we will, this area here, the little corners here, those will be dealt with when we go to do the overlap. They will uh, be invisible. Now this side is a little more tricky because it's curved. Just give a little stretch.
I'm gonna have to hand do that one. I can't get the thing in there. Same thing up here. I'm not sure how much this you could see. But it's just basically carefully uh, ironing it down to the top around the curve. And uh, around this little edge here. All right, so that's basically done. Now we're gonna trim it around the edge and uh, get it overlapped. Taking my scissors and going around the curve.
So make sure you get it laid down really nice. All right, that's that side. Now we will work on the other side. One side complete, now we'll do the other side. sides complete no wood showing in the corners there so now we're going to take some monocoat and iron it on here to cap off the top and the bottom this is the top And then I'm just going to cut it off flush, but I'm going to change blades.
trying not to cut through the wood, so I'm going to have to put this down here. I just go around that and seal it down on the edge really good. to that. I just burnt the crap out of myself. We'll do the other side here real quick and call it done. Then we'll shrink it up. It's really not too hard to monaco. It takes more patience than anything.
Now we'll go around it. Seal it down real good. Then we'll shrink her up. There it is. Okay, I'll do these ailerons off camera and then I'll bring you back when we start the top wing. Okay, so we are now going to cover the bottom of the top wing. I have a, a piece cut here. I'm going to make sure I got it enough to hang over. because it's kind of thin on the tips. This is a leftover piece from the top of the bottom wing, or the bottom of the bottom wing, I mean. So I'm gonna start off with this center here. I'm going to tack it down right at that fiberglass. Okay, so that's tacked. Now I'll show you what I do for those tabs. Okay, so you have it tacked in the center, so we're going to pull straight. And you see, here's your tabs here. So what you want to do is you want to cut the slit to the inside of the tab. And you want to just do it little by little. I'm letting the knife feel for the edge.
I'll let that peek through. And you just make the holes big enough so the tab comes through. So now is, is when you want to come down here and tack the uh, tip, the wing tip. Over here, we're gonna pull behind here. We're gonna tack this down too. The idea is to get it stretched around those around these slots. And we are going to cut sideways here doing here is just sealing around the tabs and when we are done covering this I will seal those tabs with some uh, thin resin and then we will paint them Chances are, because this is soft balsa, I'll probably end up denting the, the uh, balsa around the tabs. But it's going to get covered up by those interplane struts on the outside, so it's not going to really matter much. So that's basically the tabs. Okay, so it's now time to cover the top of the top wing. I went ahead and seamed this off camera because you've seen me do that before. I'm going to line it up where it is on the plan, tack it on the tips, and get this pretty much centered and tacked so that my, my uh, stripe is straight. So we'll get set up. I'm going to do it in fast speed because you know, you've already seen me cover 
the bottom of the bottom wing, which is basically the top of the top wing. So it's, it's all the same. So I'm going to go ahead and put you in fast speed. I'll get this done and I'm going to go ahead and assemble the airplane to get ready to do a lateral balance. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully this goes good and doesn't separate because for some reason, brand new monocoque, it doesn't want to hold down tight. I don't know what it is, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. she is top wing is done just got to hinge up the ailerons which I already covered and we are heading to the bottom wing actually I could probably put the plane together and get a uh, lateral balance then I'll cover the bottom top of the bottom wing okay so I'm pretty much set up to do a lateral balance can't put the cowl on because it's not painted yet but uh, I don't have the push rods because they're gonna weigh about the same all I'm worried about is this the head of the engine is weighing the right side heavy on the plane so what I'm gonna do is I'll take I made a little tool here to put in my spinner adapter and you just lift up and you can see it's very heavy on the right side so I've determined that I need one and a quarter ounce so I'm gonna put one and a quarter ounce all the way out here on the bottom wing tip left side these will be permanently mounted inside the wing then I'll cover the wing but as you can see with my tool in here Oh, a little bit heavy on that side now. So we'll take a quarter of an ounce off. Let's see what that does. Well, might need an eighth of an ounce. Let's try the quarter again. I say that's pretty close. Darn close. Kind of wants to evenly move both ways. So I'm going to put one and a quarter ounce of weight in that left lower wing tip I'll epoxy those in and uh, so these pieces of lead will get first of all stuck in there with the adhesive I'm going to try to put it up inside the uh, leading edge.
Okay. So that's where I'm placing it. I'll put some epoxy around it just to kind of secure it. So I'm going to disassemble, put the lower wing on its tip, put some epoxy in there to hold the in. I could probably use CA, but I'm going to use epoxy. And then we will be on to covering this bottom, top of the bottom wing. And then we're done, we're done with the covering. Still got to paint these tabs and the blue on the cowl. That is probably going to be another week away. It's, it's, I don't know whether it's just too humid in the house or what, but uh, I got the top hinges C8 on. So I'm going to go ahead, disassemble, and get the epoxy on there, get it drying. And once it's dry, I'll go ahead and cover this bottom wing off camera because you know I already showed you how to do the tab covering around the tabs so okay here's the uh, control pro test right aileron left aileron up elevator down elevator right rudder left rudder at the throttle and we're dead well she's very close to being finished and unfortunately in this video you won't see it completed the the yellow on this cowl is far from being cured and i can't paint the blue on it until this yellow is cured otherwise it'll crackle up but uh, when i go to do that i will do like a short finished video of this plane get that done have it outside running the engine up and uh but you know it's as far as i can do all i got all i have left to do is to paint the blue on the tabs where the interplane struts uh hook up and paint the blue on the cowl and get it mounted other than that this plane's finished and uh it looks pretty dang good i think so uh i'll give you a once around over it you know uh, like I usually do and uh, we're gonna call this a video uh, I got a lot of editing to do and and I worked hours to get this thing where it's at so uh, I'm happy with it and I can't wait to see it in the air so if you like this type of content please consider subscribing to my channel hit that notification bell so that you can be notified of future episodes of this build series or any other build series I might be doing and be sure and like and share my videos. It just might help someone get their airplane finished. So until next episode, thanks for watching.